On June the 1st of 2019, a mother and son set off to hike the Nelson Lakes National Park, an area known to be treacherous in the winter months. After meeting a few more hikers along the way, the two spontaneously changed their end destination, which proved to be a fatal error. After being left behind by the group, a series of poor decisions was made, resulting in a truly harrowing tale of tragedy and survival. This is Mountain Climbing Gone Wrong, The Smith Family Tragedy. In the northernmost point of the Southern Alps, in New Zealand's South Island, sits Nelson Lakes National Park, which was established in 1956. The park is famous for its beautiful forests, streams, lakes and intimidating mountains. As stated on Nelson Tasman, for experienced hikers looking for a multi-day adventure, the remote wilderness of the Nelson Lakes National Park is the perfect choice. The scenery is both varied and well suited for hiking, with its long forested valleys, high passes and mountain trails. There are various huts you can stay at along the way, some needing to be booked in advance, depending on the season. Speaking of the seasons, they recommend hiking during the summer, as winter can be particularly treacherous for inexperienced hikers. One of these difficult winter hikes is the trek to Angelus Hut, and this is the trek that Tracy Smith and her teenage son wanted to complete to kick off June. Tracy Smith and her 15 year old son loved the outdoors. The two often hiked together in New Zealand and abroad. In New Zealand, they had hiked the likes of the Heafy Track, Old Ghost Road, and the Abel Tasman Track several times. They were classed as experienced hikers who were used to high altitude, but they hadn't done any hikes in deep snow. Because of the Queen's birthday, there was a public holiday in New Zealand, so that day, Tracy and her son planned to hike Angelus Hut, which sits at an altitude of 1,650 metres. The day before the hike, the two stayed at a local lodge before setting off. On that morning, Tracy Smith talked to the manager of the lodge and explained her hiking plans to hike to Angelus Hut via Robert Ridge. Here, she was told by the manager of the lodge that she should avoid hiking to Angela's hut. This was because the temperatures were plummeting and weather forecasts weren't good. The manager showed Tracy that conditions of minus 16 Celsius were predicted and advised her to stay at the lower bushline hut instead, a much easier walk. Smith listened and the two went to the Department of Conservation Visitor Centre who backed up what the owner of the lodge had said. They said heavy winds and snow were expected and the mountain is dangerous in winter. The two accepted that it probably wasn't the best idea to hike to Angela's hut and decided to stay at the Bushline hut instead. The pair drove to Mount Robert car park to start their walk. On previous walks, they hired a personal locator beacon, but for reasons unknown, this time they didn't. When they reached Mount Robert car park, they bumped into a large group of people who were planning to hike to Angela's hut via Speargrass a more sheltered walk than Robert Ridge. Unbeknownst to Tracy and her son, the group was full of young experienced hikers who were well equipped for the journey. The two began talking to the group and decided that they would tag along and hike to Angela's hut with them, a decision that they would come to regret. They left the car park at 9.45 a.m. towards Speargrass Hut, where they would make their first stop and have lunch. They arrived at the Speargrass Hut at 1 p.m. in good spirits and had a small lunch before setting off again towards Angela's hut at 1.30pm. The weather conditions were fine at this point. It was cold and slightly snowy, but visibility was good, so the group carried on. The further the group got, the harder the trek became. Snow now started to fall heavily, and the terrain was getting steeper. This is when Tracy began to struggle. One part of the track was particularly steep, which forced the hikers to crawl on their hands and knees through the snow. This slowed Tracy down. Three quarters up, Tracy's son realised that his mother had fallen behind. He waited for her to catch up. At this point, she was weak, but she was still with it. Without realising though, the other members of the walking group had carried on ahead and they became separated. Things then went from bad to worse. Tracy started to show traits of hypothermia and was experiencing leg cramps. She couldn't walk 10 feet without falling over and they were making little progress. Her son tried to drag her along, but the snow was deep which made this difficult. It was now heading towards 5pm and the weather had dramatically gotten worse and visibility was next to none. The group who were ahead didn't realise that the two had fallen behind before it was too late and they arrived at Angela's hut at 6.15pm. 
This is where they met the volunteer hut warden. The wardens did not have any specialist training and were there to help visitors enjoy their stay. According to the coroner report, the hut warden heard the group of six of hikers arrive at around 6.30 p.m. Shortly thereafter, a male from the group sought assistance as one of their group had become cold and dehydrated. He told the hut warden that two more hikers were on the track behind, an older woman and younger male, who appeared to be struggling. When the hut warden went to the guest dormitory to assist the person needing aid, she saw six people and assumed that this included the outstanding pair. She provided assistance and went back to her accommodation for the night. It was now dark. The two were hungry and thirsty and the wind was so strong that it blew their head torches from their head. Tracy, who was now crawling, had icicles coming from her face and abrasions on her skin causing her to bleed. She began to freeze. She was now unable to speak or move her mouth. Her son tried to warm her up, but was unable to do so. At this point, Tracy fell face first into the snow and was unable to carry on. Tracy's son realized if he didn't get help, he and his mother would die. He made the decision to try and find the hut, which proved difficult because of the weather. He couldn't see the path, which led him to accidentally circle back to where his mother was. When he got there, she was sadly not moving at all. He obviously feared the worst, so he tried again to reach the hut, which he eventually did at 11.15 p.m. He was now also weak and crawling. Unfortunately, the warden hut informed her son that they could not radio out as other huts were unmanned until nine the next morning. The only way to contact help would be a personal locator beacon, but the group decided not to as they were certain by now that she was dead and didn't want to endanger a search and rescue team, so they waited until the next morning. At 8.45 the next day, she radioed the base camp who dispatched a helicopter to find Tracy. She was found dead at 10 a.m. Ice covered her face. In the aftermath, the coroner report stated that Tracy died from hypothermia. It read, her body was frozen solid and she was not showing any signs of life. She was unresponsive, pulseless, not breathing and had fixed dilated pupils. The cause of death was hypothermia. The investigation also claimed that her death was an extreme example of a string of poor decisions. Mountain Safety Council Chief Executive Mike Daisley said, it's often easy to underestimate the importance of seemingly small decisions. There are lots of little things that can be easily overlooked and when combined, each of these compound the seriousness of the situation. The first mistake was obviously not bringing a personal locator beacon, which could have alerted a rescue team when things started to get bad. The second was not listening to those who advised her to stay away from Angela's hut due to the weather. She didn't have adequate clothing for the snow and failed to bring a tent with her. As the warning signs began to show, the pair should have made the decision to turn back and return to Speargrass Hut, but they failed to do so. All of these factors contributed to her death. Investigators didn't blame the group at the hut for not activating their personal locator beacon, as they believed their concerns of putting others at risk were valid. After all, the weather was horrific. They did find that the volunteer hut warden didn't know the radio could be used to call 111, which raised questions into their training. A complete review of warden training was put into place to address this issue. Signs are now on all of the routes to Angela's hut. They read, are you tired? Are you cold? It's this much further to go. If you're not up for it at this point, go back. It's only going to get harder. Turn around now and here's another option. This must have been a truly harrowing ordeal for Tracy and her son to go through. The coroner acknowledged that her son acted bravely and did all he could do to save his mother. But sadly, it wasn't enough. I honestly hope he is doing better today. Tracy's death was a huge shock in her community. A man that knew her said, it's a small community. Everyone knew her a little bit in different ways. She was involved in quite a lot of things and had a network of people she went tramping with. She was a gentle, genuine person always well-meaning and that's how she will be remembered another said that she was a joy to know and an amazing mother this video is a reminder to always prepare properly when taking on a hike of this magnitude especially in winter as always let me know what you think below leave a like if you like the video and thank you for watching